Hello, welcome back. This is Kenshin1913, and we are Let's Playing Gabriel Knight 2, The Beast Within. In the last episode, Gracie finally, finally said sorry to Gerda. Now we're here at uh, Nershenweisen, and we're going to listen to the tour tape. Our tour begins in the entry hall. Ludwig II lived from 1840. Ludwig's passion was building... In addition to his obsession... Our tour begins in the entry hall. Ludwig II lived from 1845 to 1886. Mm. He assumed the Bavarian throne at the age of 18 when his father died. Ludwig's passion was building castles. He built three during his lifetime. Linderhof, Herrenchiemsee, and Neuschwanstein. Neuschwanstein. Plans for a fourth castle, Falkenstein, were underway when he died. In addition to his obsession with building, Ludwig also had a passion for classical, heroic German mythology, a taste he shared with the German opera composer Richard Wagner. Neuschwanstein is decorated throughout with themes from these stories, most of which directly relate to Wagner's operas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you can see, sometimes the guard will leave, and that's when we can examine things and stuff. The paintings in this room are from the Siegfried Saga. I don't know anything about Siegfried. These scenes are from the Siegfried Saga. Yeah, I guess he, they're building a sword or something. The paintings in this room are from the Siegfried... Alright, I get it. These scenes are... Alright, I get it, I get it. I wonder if these are real... I wonder where that door leads. Well, we can check it I out. I wonder where that door... Alright. I wonder where it leads to. You are now standing in the king's bedroom. The theme of the bedroom is his son and his old the tragic love story retold in Wagner's opera. The opera was given its first performance in Munich in 1865 and a 20-year-old Ludwig attended. This is probably the most elaborate and expensive bedroom ever created. It took 14 woodcarvers Four and a half years to create this room. It was this kind of extravagance that bankrupted the king. Yeah, I got In the it. years before his death, he found it increasingly difficult to find money from any source. Yeah, I can imagine. Look at all this Did stuff. they have running water in 1886? I don't know. Maybe Ludwig thought all this luxury would help him sleep. Probably not. Scenes from the opera Tristan and Isolde. Yep, Tristan and Isolde. The richly carved bed, with its canopy, Ooh. resembles a Gothic building and its turrets. The bed's draperies were handmade by dozens of Bavarian seamstresses. Good for them. Hopefully making that money, right? I guess this is uh, Isolde. Scenes from the opera Tristan and Isolde. Yeah, Tristan and Isolde, I think, are like, uh, they're like, um, what do you call it, like star-crossed lovers. This is Ludwig's private chapel. The king was a devout Catholic, as were all of the Wittelsbacher rulers. They supported the Roman Church, even when other European countries were dominated by Protestantism. Hmm. Look at this cross here, huh? It's a beautiful crucifix, ivory and gold. The Black Madonna of El Tadin. I wonder what her story is all about. I don't know, but let's not start getting into her story too, jeez. The stained glass window depicts St. Louis receiving the last sacraments. <sighs> A king saint? I wonder if Ludwig pictured himself that way. Maybe. Or maybe he just wanted to be that way. The paintings above the altar depict St. Louis surrounded by the seraphim. An interesting side note. For a period of about a year, the Louis images in all three castles were ordered to be covered up with black cloth on the unfathomable whim of the king. Yeah, that's weird. Hey, let's go in here. Let's listen to this. This is the king's living room. The walls are decorated with scenes from the Lohengrin saga. The king first saw Wagner's opera Lohengrin when he was 16. 
and it so affected him that he considered it a form of enlightenment. The tragedy of Lohengrin was his essential loneliness. This too was Ludwig's own fate. Ludwig withdrew more and more into his fantasy world of epic heroes, an absolute monarchy. An ideal he was determined to create in his castles if he could not have it in his real life. He only wanted to be alone with his dreams, so much so that even his servants were kept at a distance and were not allowed to look at him. What were you afraid they'd see? Probably, I don't know, it's just weird looking, I don't know. Who knows, maybe he's got bite marks or he smells really bad, I don't know. The Miracle of the Grail. The Holy Grail. Only the penitent man shall pass. Grace Nakamura. These linens look seriously expensive and seriously old. Damn right they do. Anyways, let's head over here. The swan, the painting behind the swan, the swan motif is featured throughout the castle, but it is particularly prominent in this room. Both the swan and the lily were symbols Ludwig associated with himself. They represented his ideals of majesty and purity. The painting behind the swan shows Lohengrin's arrival. Yeah, so let's look at this, huh? Lohengrin? More swans. Yeah, we saw swans. What's this? This is a reproduction of the grotto from the Tannhäuser saga. In such places, Ludwig could pretend he was one of his beloved mythic heroes. As the grotto personifies, the castles were solitary playgrounds built for Ludwig alone. He believed the masses were too coarse to appreciate fine art and he seldom entertained guests. In fact, Ludwig had a standing order that upon his death the castles were to be destroyed. Fortunately, the estate was in such debt that the castles were opened for paint tours only weeks after Ludwig's death. Really? They haven't closed since. It is one of the great ironies of Ludwig's story that the castles that he was thought insane for building are now considered Bavaria's finest treasures. Yeah, they are. They have cool. paid for their construction many times over. Honestly, if if uh, if I was uh, like I had money and I could go to Germany, I'd probably come. I can almost picture Ludwig in here. I wonder what he really dreamt about in this room. I don't know. Probably wolves or something. This is the king's study. Ludwig spent much time at his desk writing letters, drawing up plans for his projects, and studying his favorite authors. He loved poetry, history, and the classics. In later years, he also studied the occult. What affairs of state he did reluctantly attend to were generally attended to alone at his desk in writing. His reluctance to meet with his heads of state and perform the duties of the king were one of the reasons for the charges brought against him in 1886. But Ludwig dreamt of true kingship and a true monarchy, and the small powers left to him after Bavaria succeeded power to Prussia only incited his disdain and frustration. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? This lady likes following me around, huh? I doubt there's anything left in there now. Besides, the guard would kill me if I touched it. Yeah, I'd probably have to kill the guard. What's this? The study paintings depict scenes from the Tannhäuser Saga and the Wartburg Castle. Really? What's that? The study paintings depict scenes from the Tannhäuser Saga. So it looks like... A pulp for giving somebody or something, and then now people are dancing and shit. I wonder why he was studying the occult before he died. I don't know, probably something. I mean, the, the Schottenjäger's got involved, that was something else. This is the final room of our tour. Yes. The Singer's Hall. 
It was modeled after the Singer's Hall of the Wartburg Castle, where minstrel competitions were held in the 13th century. The hall was built for small private concerts, but Ludwig himself never gave one here. It is said that during the last few years of Wagner's life, he came to Neuschwanstein frequently and performed for the king alone in this room. The hall is probably best known for its enigmatic wolf painting. Yeah, the so. original paintings were from the Parseval saga, but in 1882, Ludwig had them replaced, supplying the description and titles of the new paintings himself. Yeah, so I guess While the... all the other rooms in the castle show scenes from Wagner's operas, the scenes in this room are not from any opera that anyone can identify. It is yet another of the many mysteries associated with the life of the fairy tale king. Oh, thank you. Anyways, let's, let's look at this. The hunters track down Engelhardt and Hildegunde. Okay, so let's start from here, maybe. What? No. Let's see. Oh. Is it this one? Nope. Alright, so I guess... There must be a story behind these wolf paintings. Yes. But what story? So there's a wolf here. Let's start here, I guess. Engelhardt and the blacksmith. Yeah, so he's a blacksmith. Engelhardt courts Hildegunde. Yeah, apparently these two. Engelhardt were... courts. Yes, yes. They, they were in love. Then this guy caught him, I guess. The hunters track down Engelhardt and Hildegunde. And is that it? Is that all the, uh... Is that all the paintings here, I guess, for now? Oh no, there are more. Hildegunde's imprisonment. The wedding feast of Hildegunde and the Baron. The death of Engelhardt. Oh, he's a wolfie. What's this? Ludwig's childhood castle, Hohenschwangau, is visible this? from the lookout in the oh. singer's hall. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I guess uh, they had a some sort of death. Or... Boy, I can't look at that. How do I get out of here? Okay, good. All right, so there you go. There's that one castle. I guess I'll save it. I don't know why I didn't save it last time, but whatever. I'll save it as H I J. All right, so we've explored one of the castles. That one's pretty cool. That's Riddersburg. And this is Hern Shringy Shringy. This is Ludwig's second thing. I can't see the displays until I've gotten past the counter. Alright, so let's talk to the broad here. The broad and see if we can get it. So yeah, he pretty much was like this Good really talk. rich guy. Couldn't talk. Kind of crazy, didn't like doing stuff. He really loved fairy tales and stuff. Uh, let's ask, is this the Ludwig Museum? Is das the Ludwig Museum? Ja, ja. Ah, ja. Ludwig, der Zweite von Bayern. Thank you. I'd like to buy a ticket. Ich hätte gern eine Eintrittskarte fürs Museum. Ja, 8 Mark für eine Ganztagskarte. Yeah, that's how much? 38 plus tax, there you go. Now give me a, a receipt and a, a wristband. So. That's it, a ticket. Danke, bitte. It seems like Gracie's always mean and nastiest people. So let's start by looking at this thing. She's beautiful. Who is she? 
One of Ludwig's few close friends was Empress Elizabeth of Austria. She was a distant cousin of the boy prince, and he saw her often growing up. Graceful and beautiful, Elizabeth seemed to represent the feminine ideal to the younger Ludwig. Their friendship continued after her marriage, mainly by correspondence. She remained a source of stability for Ludwig throughout his life. In keeping with Ludwig's love of romance and drama, he called her the Dove, and he to her was the Eagle. Oh, nice. Code names and all that, I guess. So let's look at these things. What do we got here? We got Ludwig. Letters to Elizabeth. July 3rd, 1863. Elizabeth, you can have no idea, dear cousin, how happy you made me. The hours recently passed with you in the railway carriage I consider among the happiest in my life. Never will their memory fade. You gave me permission to visit you at Ischl. If the time comes for this ardent hope to be fulfilled, I shall be of all men upon earth the most blessed. The feelings of sincere love and reverence and faithful attachment to you, which I cherished in my heart even as a boy, makes me imagine heaven upon earth and will be extinguished by death alone. I beg you with all my heart to forgive the contents of this letter, but I could not help myself. Ludwig. What the hell is he talking about? What is he talking about? No. Why would he send her a letter of love? Elizabeth frequently gave Ludwig advice on royal conduct, hoping to protect him from unfavorable public opinion. March 1st, 1865. My dearest Eagle, you have not written me in a few months. I have missed you. I often try to imagine what you are doing. I hear tales that you have been on retreat and have not been seen in Munich for some time. I suspect it is this new friend you wrote up so mysteriously that takes you away from home. I hope you are enjoying yourself, my beloved, but I beg you to caution. The people need to see you at the throne. I also hesitate to suggest that what your officials do in your absence may not always be in your own best interest. You have always been a true king, but you must let the people see you to ensure that they don't forget that. E, your dove. Yep, so Ludwig pretty much was, uh, he's talking about his friend that he met. Ludwig's friends were concerned for his mental state long before his arrest. June 14th, 1878. My beloved Eagle, in your last letter you spoke so movingly of your torment that I was moved to tears. What is this torment? Why won't you confess to me what is truly troubling you? You must know that I would never despise you no matter how horrible you believe your sins to be. Please do not write such barbs to my heart by even suggesting such things. If you do not wish to confess to me, at least tell me how I can aid you. I am always your true one, your dove. Oh, how nice. So apparently he was going wacky, schmacky there. In this letter, dated November 1886, Elizabeth of Austria thanks Bishop Frank for his assistance in helping her fulfill Ludwig's last wishes. She writes that she knows it was an unusual request, but she believes Ludwig had reasons of his own for wishing it to be done. She hopes that his spirit finds peace at last. No further reference to this letter has ever been found. One can only speculate what the last wishes of a cornered and embattled Ludwig might have been. Yeah, we gotta figure that out. What were his last wishes? This place is giving me more questions than answers. Yeah, well, maybe we can figure it out, and maybe we can't, you know? Oh, here we go. They certainly make an incredible looking couple. There's Ludwig and... They certainly make an incredible... Awesome. They certainly all make right, an... Alright, alright, I get it. Ludwig and... Austria and Lady and look at that nice person. Ludwig is Prince Charming. He played the part well. Yeah, he knew how to make his cloaks flowy and shit, huh? Can you go here? No, over here I guess. Let's go this way. Let's look at this. The last days of Ludwig, so let's read June seventh, eighteen eighty six. 
a group of men arrive at Neuschwanstein Castle, demanding to take the king in custody. With them is Dr. Gudin, the doctor who had been in charge of Otto, the king's mentally ill brother. The men have an order for the king's arrest on the grounds of insanity. They are refused admittance by a brave group of farmers and local soldiers who have come to Ludwig's aid. They are forced to retreat to nearby Hohenschwangau. This is the first Ludwig hears of the conspiracy. Ludwig composes a pamphlet explaining the subversive acts of the conspirators and eloquently pleading with his people for aid. The pamphlet is smuggled out of Neuschwanstein and printed, but the pamphlets are seized before they can be distributed. Yeah, what are these pamphlets, I wonder? June 12, 1886, Ludwig knows the conspirators will return. He despairs. He asks his servant for the keys to the tower. The servant, fearing the king intends suicide, says the key is lost. Unbeknownst to Ludwig, the conspirators arrive at the castle. This time, there is no one to stop them. Ludwig is lured from his bedroom to the entry hall of Neuschwanstein on pretense. There, he is taken into custody. Ludwig is taken by carriage from Neuschwanstein to Berg, where his brother Otto had long been imprisoned. This is a great blow to the king's state of mind. While on the way, the group stops at Sieshaupe to change horses. Ludwig asks to see the postmistress, Frau Vogel. She brings him a glass of water and he says something to her. She never reveals these last words to anyone. Oh, very interesting. So he must have given June 12th, her... no, unbeknownst no, no. to Ludwig, Ludwig is taken by... He must have given her something. June 13th, 1886. At Berg, Ludwig seems cooperative and coherent. Dr. Gudin writes to the government that he has Ludwig well under control. The two men go out for a walk, and Dr. Gudin is so confident he dismisses the guards. When Ludwig and the doctor do not return after several hours, a search is undertaken. The bodies of the two men are found in the lake, drowned. Circumstances unknown. Hmm. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean that he killed them or something? June 18th, 1886. Ludwig's funeral procession marches through the streets of Munich, followed by enormous crowds of mourners. The service is held at a packed St. Michael's church. Lightning strikes the church during the service, but no one is harmed. Ludwig's body is entombed in the Wittelsbach crypt at St. Michael's. His heart is placed in an urn in the pilgrimage chapel at Altading in the Wittelsbach tradition. The urn is shown to the right. His heart is in an urn. How bizarre. Creepy, it's disgusting. June 18th, no, no, Ludwig's no. body. No, 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 I don't need to hear any more. Thank you. Let's look at this thing, huh? I have no idea what that says. Looks old, though. Yeah, it's probably his propaganda or, or maybe even a rest warrant. Look at this picture, huh? Oh my god. That's the sleigh for my dream. Yeah, Ludwig was on it, and they're having... Maybe Mrs. Smith will know what my dream meant. I have to ask someone. This thing is getting too weird. Don't bother. Ludwig embarking on his sleigh. Don't bother. The Midnight Sleigh Rides. Ludwig went on long sleigh rides in the middle of the night, particularly in his later years. It is said that he suffered from insomnia, headaches, and toothaches, and the rides soothed his restlessness. The sight of the king's grand sleigh speeding through the countryside of the Alps often startled the peasants and became a superstitious omen of ill fortune. I can see why, but what was he doing out there at night? Probably just like chilling. I mean, maybe he did a lot of drugs or something. Ludwig's death mask. Wow. Maybe he did like a lot of drugs in there. He's like, whoa, I gotta get the hell. I gotta get the hell out of here. So did I look at everything? Let's see. Talk to the grumpy woman. Get the letters on the right wall. I go to continue right and the display room. Look at the picture. Midnight sleigh. Look at the display case under the picture and read the last signs. The four letters. Exit the display room. Read. Let's go this way, I guess. And this way. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think we're done. Oh, 
Oh, there's all this here. Ludwig's Grand Master Wardrobe from the Knights of St. George. Hmm. Look at him having, having... Looks like it weighs a ton. Uh, I don't know about that, but maybe. Anyways, let's look at this. What does this say? Ludwig is Grand Master of the Knights of St. George. The Knights of St. George was an aristocratic society dedicated to the acts of chivalry. Ludwig loved the medieval pageantry of the order in his early years before his increasing reclusiveness drove him to abandon public appearances. Well, he's definitely... He looks so regal. Why would he give up all of this pageantry and become a recluse? Well, must, something must have happened to him for sure. Ludwig, Grand Master of the Knights of St. George. There's got to be a connection between all this St. George stuff and Gabriel. Yeah, I mean, he had a thing at St. George. Ludwig and Wagner. Ludwig loved the opera of his contemporary, Richard Wagner. He helped support Wagner's music through much of his life. Ludwig considered Wagner a close friend, often calling him the great friend. Wagner encouraged this infatuation, some believe, for personal gain. Typical artist. Yeah. Typical artist, gain. All right, so here is Ludwig's diary. Even after Wagner's death, Ludwig still showed signs of obsession with the composer. This letter, written in 1882 by Ludwig to the conductor of the Munich Opera, instructs the conductor to make preparations for a new Wagner opera. The conductor went to see the king as instructed. When he arrived, Ludwig was ill and refused to see him. Nothing further was ever heard of this mysterious new opera. Was it a figment of an ill man's desperate wishes? Maybe. Hmm. Maybe the, a new Wagner opera. Ludwig is offered a crown of laurels by the genius of immortal fame. Well, that's kind of nice. 26 July, 1874. By the power of the lily, we shall have the strength to resist all temptations throughout the whole year. Throughout the whole year. 26 July, 1875. Solemn oath before the picture of the great king. Refrain for three months from all excitement. This oath has its binding power as well as its potency by De Par Le Roy, LNR, DPLR. What excitement! I need to see more of that diary! Yeah, how can we get more of that diary? How can we get some of that sweet diary action? So let's talk to this lady. Maybe she knows something about a Wagner opera or something? Guten Tag. Guten Tag. We can ask her about Wagner and the opera. Im Museum es einen Brief von Ludwig über eine neue Wagner Oper. Ja, ja. Ich kenne diesen Brief. Wo kann ich äh, mehr von dieser Wagner Oper sehen? Ich weiß nichts über Wagner. Das hier ist kein Wagner Museum. Ja, ich weiß. In Bayreuth befindet sich ein Wagner Museum. Versuchen Sie es halt doch, ne? Bayreuth. Danke. Yep, so there's a. Oh, look, that lady actually was useful. So, yeah, we've learned that there's another. There's a Wagner Museum in Bayreuth, which is right here. So let's head in here. And we'll talk to this guy. Grüß Gott. Guten Tag. Is das die Wagner Museum? Yeah. Huh? You're an American, aren't you? I'm afraid the house is closed this time of year. It will be open next month. Crap. <laughs> you are interested in Wagner? Very interested. Very recently very interested. Now, well, who is it? Sure. Most of the house is closed for cleaning, but uh, a few rooms are open. I shouldn't let you, probably, but... If it is only you, you are alone, aren't you? Endlessly. <laughs> <laughs> Come in and look over. That's very generous. Um, what do I owe you? Georg. Georg Emmerding. 
it's only a few displays. Besides, I wouldn't be much of a um, shining knight if I charge you. Thanks, Georg. What a guy. My name is Grace. Hello. Have a good time. What a guy, huh? This Georg, he's a, he's a swell fella. Anyways, I'm going to stop the video here. In the next episode, we're going to explore all about Wagner. And then we're going to learn about him and maybe his uh, relationship with Ludwig II. I've been Kinch in 1913, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.